Cool, so Travis picking again, but a little bit more modern. Now, last time um, we talked about some of the basics of it, okay, and this idea of being able to, um, how do we describe it? Kind of a one man band thing where we're trying to do the bass, we're trying to do the chords, we're trying to do the melody. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. Now, I showed you in quite a sort of a linear way of doing it, okay? A constant bass line. There wasn't a particular sort of, there wasn't much groove to it. Towards the end of the session, we started to put in this little trick of playing up on the G, which gave it a little bit of movement. And we're going to be moving in that direction a little more today uh, however it's going to be very much in a rhythm so it's going to be possibly a little bit easier to uh, digest all right so let's look at the tab i reckon that's a good place to start let's just look at the tab shall we Wow, here we are okay so I'm just going to try and my best to just give you a couple of these lines first, all right? Because I don't want you running ahead, um, because well, it will just it will hold you back in the long run, all right? So everything that we're going to do is still based on this very linear, um, just alternating bass, where with our thumb we're moving between A and D string. If you hold down an A minor chord, okay and your thumb is gonna play A, D, A, D, A, D, like this, okay? Just like before, we're going one, uh, two, uh, three, and four, uh, one. Okay, now everything is still based around this, okay? So if in 10 minutes time, half an hour time, whatever, if you're feeling a little bit lost about what's going on, just go back to this motion because that is absolutely underneath it, all right? That's the whole Travis picking vibe. And then all we do is we just layer stuff on top. So really, Travis picking is like the dream sort of guitar lesson for a teacher because we can build it in a sort of a modular way. We can go back to the beginning at any point. So make sure you're comfortable with that first bar of one and two and three and four and. Now, when we get to the second bar, this is gonna introduce where our groove is. And we touched on this last week, all right? And the idea is that you're gonna introduce your index finger, all right? After the and of one. What I mean by that, is after playing the D string, second fret, you're gonna play the G string, second fret. You don't need to really think about frets, you just need to think about strings because you're holding an A minor. So you should end up with this. So one and a two. So I've played the first bar and I think we're all pretty cool at playing this already, I reckon. And now I've started to play the second bar. I'm doing exactly the same thing of thumb, 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 thumb. However, this little cheeky note has come in to make things a little bit more interesting. And we can actually change, see that the note values change. That can be a little confusing because it suggests that we don't play this for as long, but actually it still stays ringing out. Guitar music is a bit of a nightmare for reading rhythm sometimes. You have to sort of read between the lines a little bit. But this note is what's happening that's crucial, okay? That one note there. And we are going to play that with our index finger, all right? Can I just put some text in? I'm gonna write index finger, okay? Just on that one note there. All right, really important and helpful if we can get that nailed right now. So let's recap again, because these basics are super, super important. And actually, if you're super advanced, you're probably taking this bit for granted a little bit, but this is your opportunity to really have a strong foundation in what you're doing, which will mean that everything will open up 
in a wildly and exciting and brilliant way all right but if you've got crumbly foundations um it's it's gonna uh, it's gonna get a bit frustrating pretty quick so recapping we're holding down an a minor chord nice nice and simple our thumb in the first bar is alternating between a and d one and two and now we're working with the second bar where we're doing exactly the same thing but after the first and our index finger is going to play the G. So we end up with this. One, two, three. Ready? Start to play with the dynamics. Nice to make that index finger really loud. Maybe one as well. finger just disappear and then maybe bring it back maybe vary where you're playing on the guitar you're able to play that so that mechanism especially if that first bar is going to be throughout this whole thing which is nice and refreshing isn't it so you can just keep going back to that if you want right what's going to happen now is we're going to build it into our chord sequence we've got our bass line we know that's going to carry on forever more now we need our chords and we're going to have an a minor a c a G and then an A minor again okay let me just double check everyone's totally cool with those chords we've got the A minor first fret B string um, and then G uh, second fret and then D second fret for the A minor to move to the C it's actually kind of easy our third finger just comes up to the A string there to go to our G now let's talk about this this is kind of interesting some of us do our G like this some do it like this some do it like this some do it like this uh, I don't know it's up to you but actually in this case it makes loads of sense to use two and three and then little finger okay it's gonna make loads of sense because then your first finger is ready to go back to the A minor and there's loads of finger picking Travis picking kind of stuff that's gonna make sense to do your G like that okay so I'd recommend using second finger A string second fret third finger E string third fret and little finger E string third fret having said all of that if you just learn a G for the first time probably just stick to the way you're doing it so that's our chord sequence for now, all right? A minor, three, four, C, four, G, three, four, A. Nice and simple. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go back over to the tab, shall we? Okay, let's move in on these first four bars, okay? Because what is happening here? Well, there's actually quite a lot happening. Oh, let's see if I can get it relatively good for you. Not doing too well with the old zooming activity, am I today? I'll get there. There you go. I think that's good enough. So we're looking at the a little bit out again. Yeah, let's do it out again. Oh my word! What's happening? Okay, so we are looking at all of those bars, all right? Those four bars. Now that might look a little bit overwhelming actually as to what's going on, but let me break it down for you, nice and simple. We're playing A minor, C, G, A minor. In the bass, we're going between thumb and thumb. 
For the A minor chord, we're going A, D, A, D, A, D, A, D. For the C chord, we're going A, D, A, D, A, D, A, D. We get to the G, it gets a little bit different. It's like when we went to the E last week. We're going E, D, E, D, E, D, E, D. When we get to the A, we go back to A, D, A, D. So let's just get a bass line sorted with those chords. So nice and slow, one, two, sorry, one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and so my thumb does the same pattern for every single chord apart from that G where it switches to E D E D so you've got the chords one two three four one two And then we've got the bass line. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, it helps if I play the right chord, all right? Let's go in round and round and round. Let's just get that sorted for now. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Beginning and now just playing this simplistically, you can start emphasizing those notes and make it go on a little bit of a journey already. All right, plenty of players will just play this simplistically anyway. Most of you are alright with that, but don't worry if you're not, don't worry if you're just learning a basic pattern. That's cool, that's really cool. Take from it what you want. Right, what's happening next is we're bringing it to the modern world a little bit, okay? We're taking it away from more sort of traditional Travis picking and giving it a bit of rhythm by introducing that index finger. <laughs> Okay, so that's a sudden leap, it's sound wise anyway, all right, but actually it's not kind of that crazy if I really, really break it down. So what's happening is let's just focus in on that A minor chord, all right, I'm going to do some more zooming that hopefully will be slightly more successful than it has been. It's really just not working for me today, is it? So we're going to just look at this first bar. So we've still got the beat going dum da dum Dun, 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 dun. However, we've got these little extra notes, but they're put into packs of two, hmm, which is where we get our rhythm. So, work with me note by note here. We're going to play one and, okay, and then your index finger is going to play up on the G. And then you're going to play two, and then your middle finger is going to play the B. Go through that again so we're going one and and then index finger plays the G and then we go two and then your middle finger plays the B and your thumb goes down to the D so we've just done half the bar there so remember all you're doing is going A D A D however now we're throwing in an index finger and a middle finger after the and, and then after the two. One, two, and. Hmm. Hmm. That can be pretty tricky. I'm gonna keep breaking it down a few times. Obviously some of you are just working through it in your own pace. That's totally cool. So 
the, holding that A minor chord, just playing between A and D. And in fact, you could just do that for the rest of the session. But what's happening now to make it a little bit more modern, and we'll scupper some of you, don't worry, you can watch this video back and try it a few times, is you're playing A, D, G, A, B, D. Thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle. But the rhythm is important because the thumb movement stays even, so you fit the index and middle in quicker. But your thumb actually never breaks its rhythm. It's got a little more of a modern feel to it, hasn't it, with that rhythmic pattern. But it's still Travis picking. Because we've got that alternating bass going on. Just throwing in a little bit more rhythm. I'm going to take it a little slower. Keep doing that. A D G A B D. A D G A B D. A D G A B D. A A D G A B D. Thumb, thumb index, thumb, middle thumb. I <laughs> can't do that quick enough. Can't say that quick enough. Nice. All right. Okay. So then we put it into the context of the whole chord sequence. And remember, don't worry if you don't have this right now, you can sort of busk through it and you can come back to it later as well. Unfortunately, it's not quite like Sky Plus where you can just kind of pause me and then um, come back to me in a minute, but it will be later once it's recorded. Um, so we do exactly the same pattern. However, we're just still changing that bass line. But you'll notice the index and middle finger doesn't change at all. So when we get to the G chord, even though our thumb is going E, D, E, D, we're still with our index playing the G and with our middle playing the B. So we get this. Okay, I'm going to do that just in a loop for you and see if you can find your way through it. If it's getting super frustrating, then just strum that first chord, all right? Just enjoy the experience of playing along together, all right? We don't always have to be able to get everything. Here we go. One, uh, dun, 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 dun. One two, three, four. Back to the beginning there.
Okay, I guess some of you are now at a point where you can do that really confidently and competently. So now what you want to do is be able to focus in on the bass. And I know I bang on this bow all the time, but be able to bring up that bass, all right? And you should be able to make it sound a bit more Travis Pickney with a... And let everything else disappear a little bit. So be like this. trebles okay there's a lot of singer songwriters that do stuff like this absolutely beautifully I was don't know if anyone saw um, Paul Simon do uh, for like a 9-11 memorial concert um, which just absolutely beautiful um, uh, finger picking um, that works in exactly this way of sitting back on the bass and then oh the sparkly sounds start to come out. The guitar is a seriously orchestral instrument like that. It's kind of an orchestra in your fingers. It's like bring in the violins and then bring in the double basses. That kind of way of thinking and that's the the magic that you will love and know when you hear finger picking. So we're going to go around again and see if you can start to do that. You don't have to do that with me, do you know what I mean? You can sort of do it in your own way. Um, so we're just sticking around that same uh, sequence, playing exactly the same way. We're just varying those dynamics. We're just changing the orchestration of it a little bit. Uh, here we go, one, two, three, four. lost in the detail which is nice it's a good detail to get lost into it's kind of like a meditation really a little bit strange. Can you zone in on your index finger, the fingertip, and then maybe the middle finger. To melodic Travis picking land. We've got the bass, we've got the chords, and now we've got a bit of melody, and it sounds like this. Nice, huh?
what's happening here, folks, is we're playing uh, two notes together on beats one and three. Okay. Now, I'm keeping it nice and simple, and I'm just doing that on the E string with my ring finger every single time. The benefits of this, you can just sort of hone in on that one finger and bring in the volume of that playing with and bringing it up and down if you can. All right, Maybe that's a little bit too soon to be doing that for some of you, maybe not for others. So it's exactly the same pattern. If you peel it right back, we've just got... Then we can start to add in the extra fingers. in the melody. And what's lovely about playing with chords is that we don't need to think about, I don't know, much else other than just changing chords because by playing the same string over and over again, when we change the chord, we eventually change the notes. We get a bit of melody. That happens with finger picking a lot, that you'll sort of find an accidental melody just by, as you change chords. So I think best here is that I just play it around a whole bunch of times for you. Um, now remember, you could just be playing this bass line. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep alternating between three versions. Playing through the bass, we did most recently then I'm going to bring the melody then I go back to the beginning up to you what you do hear how, how sort of orchestral it is just by playing those three different parts and it shows how important it is to not be complacent 
with like dynamics and stuff just because it's simple well done everyone um fantastic okay let's let's just add another little layer i feel like i feel like we could handle one more layer on top of that um it's nice not to go too far with it because there's so much that you can achieve just with the simplicity of those patterns as well um and the next level that I would suggest, because I did talk about making this more of a modern Travis picking thing, and that is to bring in a nice humble string slap. So we get this. Ha! Yeah, it kind of just um, brings everything to life a little bit. I'm going to cover the string slap in its uh, basics here as well because some of us might not be too familiar with it and if you're already a genius at it it's nice to revisit it um, and think about how you're doing it. So all that we're doing is we're turning our wrist and essentially like a downstroke. When you do a downstroke you turn your wrist like this. Hmm. Maybe you've never thought about that before, but that is what you're doing when you click against the strings to get a string slap. Use the side of your thumb, probably aiming around the bony sort of knuckle, but the side, not the back or the front or whatever. And you're just clicking that against the lower strings. Try and avoid doing it with your thumb, which is something that a lot of people immediately do. Okay, thumb joints are pretty useless for fluid movement, actually. Okay, we wanna do it with our wrist. So just relax your thumb and you turn it and it knocks against the lower strings and you're aiming for a click sound. Rather than a thud, you're aiming for a click. Just experiment with it, okay? The realities are you've probably done this without thinking about it, but if it's the first time that now you've thought about it, you're probably doing it really weirdly and your whole body's like tense and it sounds really strange. Just try and take a little step back and... Uh, and I know that my uh, uh, toddler, all right, he will make the most amazing string slap by coming in and going on my guitar, not thinking about it, okay? So try and keep that in mind. Not that my toddler is better at string slapping than you, it's more that actually, it's that intuitive, okay? And why we tend to get this stuff wrong is because we're sort of thinking about it and being really tense. So we're just making this lovely little click sound. Now, what about the sort of science behind this? Well, what's happening is we, uh, oh, well, let me just adjust that because that's frustratingly uneven, isn't it? And I certainly can't handle that. There we go. And in fact, let's get some chords in here. Sorry, folks, sorry, sorry. Oh no, let's see. Let's get an A minor in there. Let's just help, help everyone out as much as possible. And uh, when do we go? Then we go to a G, then we go to an A minor, nice and easy. Great, so what was I saying? We are doing exactly the same thing. I've actually taken the melody notes out to keep it even simpler, but rather than uh, always playing our first bass note, or our A string or our E string in the case of the G, 
on the second and third, we're gonna click against the strings. So we, if I just did the bass line, this is a good way to learn it. So we're going one and two and three and four and we're then going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay this is more advanced stuff so if you struggle with any part of this please please don't worry all right so i break it down again holding my a minor chord doing the bass line one and two and three and four and but i'm string slapping on two and four. One and two and three and four and. Let's put it into the sequence. One and two and three and four and C and two and three and four and G. crossing that wonderful bridge from Travis picking one man band into sort of contemporary fingerstyle or percussive acoustic playing, whatever you want to call it. Okay, where well, we're bringing in some percussion as well, rather than just drums, um, <laughs> drums rather than just bass chords and melody, we're now bringing in drums, bass chords and melody. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. But as you can see on the tab, it's slightly more complicated than that because we've introduced that G and B again. So we get one and two. <laughs> okay, which can be a little bit trickier, but actually it's all the same as what we've covered before. The bass keeps going, but we're just introducing that sort of middle ground where we've got the G and the B. spicy that one to get your your fingers around so I'll give you a few moments to to get comfy um, and then we'll get stuck into looping it around again you can always bring it back to that one and two and three So as a little uh, uh, reminder as well with that string snap, try and not do the motion with your thumb. Do the motion with your wrist or from your wrist, but you're making contact with your thumb. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm trying to think of other analogies for that, but a lot of movements that we do, even though we're sort of actioning the movement, if you like, or delivering the movement with one part of your body, actually it can come from somewhere else. So it's coming from turning your wrist, not this, it's this, okay? Not this, this. <laughs> I can see some, I don't know if Andy's finding the, uh, <laughs> a punch, was it from the wrist? Um, yeah, what? just uh, yeah, from, 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 from the shoulder, not, not that I've ever punched anyone, ever. But yeah, apparently non-violent. Yeah, that's apparently how you do it. Okay, well you heard it here. You heard it here first. That's fantastic advice. <laughs> I try. I try and keep my guitar playing analogies peaceful, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've got to protect your hands. Um. Cool. Okay. So that's super complicated stuff. So you know, don't don't worry about it. Or 
worry about it later and watch the video back. So I'm now going to play it around a whole bunch of times. We'll spend the next sort of five minutes just in a lovely eternal meditative loop of playing this round and round. I'm going to play the bass. Then I'm going to bring in the G and B. Then I'm going to bring in the melody. Then I'm going to bring in the percussion. bass okay now it's up to you you could do exactly what I'm doing or you could take one of those all right and just play along or I don't know you could get a cup of tea or you could do a guitar solo over the top of it I really don't mind as long as you're enjoying playing along no. cool all right let's let's go through our last little playthrough um, Okay, one and two and three and four and one. I've started a bit fast. I do apologise. Let's do it again. One.
cool. There we go. Cool, blimey. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that made a little bit of sense as well, that progression for you. Um, and remember, it's all about sort of taking what you want there. So um, no need to master every level at all. Fantastic.